Can you know everything there is to know about something just by looking at it? The answer to that question is, of course, no. That's especially true of the things left behind by our ancestors, many of which were made using unknown methods or served unknown purposes. The world is full of ancient mysteries, and some of the best of them are right here in this video. Let's start with one of the world's most famous geoglyphs. It's the Uffington White Horse in Oxfordshire, England, which is sometimes referred to as the granddaddy of English geoglyphs. The complete history of this ancient work of art will never be known. There's no reference to it in English literature until the 11th century. For several centuries, nobody knew how old it was. Some speculated that it was created for King Alfred, to celebrate his great victory over the Danes in 871. Others speculated it was connected to Hengist, the first of the Saxon kings, whose personal emblem is known to have been a white horse. Silt testing was carried out in 1990, and the results of the tests proved that neither of those stories could be true. The Uffington White Horse was actually created during the Bronze Age, some 3,000 years ago. It still looks clean and sharp today because it's regularly maintained by the National Trust. Creating the horse would have been a monumental task for people living that long ago, and we'll never know what it meant to them or why they did it. We're looking at another geoglyph now, but we're traveling thousands of miles across the world to do it. This is the Atacama Giant in Huara, Chile. It's among the largest ancient geoglyphs on the planet and is thought to represent an ancient god of the desert. There's some speculation that its creators might have used it as a means of measuring the passage of time. Estimates of its age range between 600 years and 1,000 years. It's not alone on the hillside. It's surrounded by more than 5,000 smaller glyphs of birds, humans, and enigmatic geometric shapes. The design is basic, save for the straight lines that emanate from its head and torso. Experts are split on whether these lines represent ceremonial clothing or whether they're supposed to represent a glow, similar to the rays of the sun. What they agree on, though, is that the lines align with the moon and can be used to track its transit through the sky, thus enabling the ancient residents of the Atacama Desert to predict the coming of the rainy season. Elsewhere in the Atacama, you'll find a giant hand poking out of the sand. It's known, appropriately enough, as the Hand of the Desert. If you were traveling down the Pan American Highway through this part of Chile and didn't know it was there, you'd quite rightly wonder who would create such a thing and why. There's nothing on either side of it for hundreds of miles, and nobody lives anywhere near here. Because the terrain is so flat and the hand is almost 40 feet tall, it can be seen from quite a distance. There's less mystery to this find, but it's an incredible sight all the same. The hand is actually a work of art created by the famed Chilean sculptor Mario Irarrázabal in the early 1980s. Hands are a subject of great fascination to this artist. He's created another one on a beach in Uruguay. His work inspired the sculpture called The Awakening, which was made by American sculptor John Seward Johnson II and stands at the National Harbor in Prince George's County, Maryland. The artist has never explained why he's so fascinated by hands, but his obsession has created beautiful monuments. We know we started this video by saying that our world is full of incredible mysteries and fantastic finds, but now we're going to leave our world entirely and go to Mars. NASA's Curiosity rover took these fascinating pictures of mineral veins on the Martian surface in April 2015. The site is known to NASA scientists as Garden City and comprises a network of ridges standing tall above the eroded layers of bedrock in which they formed millions of years ago. They can only have been created by fluids moving through cracked layers of rock, depositing minerals in the fractures as they go. The minerals affect the chemistry of the rock, resulting in the color changes we see in the pictures. 
there's a difference of about 39 feet between the highest of the ridges and the bottom of the lake bed. Looking at the images and the way that the pattern of the mineral veins appears to be artificial, it's no wonder that a few conspiracy theorists on the internet tried to claim them as evidence of the existence of an ancient civilization on Mars. We're coming back down to Earth to look at more petroglyphs now. To be specific, we're looking at the Blythe Intaglios in Blythe, California, USA. Like many examples of this ancient form of art, the images are a mix of animal shapes, human figures, and geometric designs like lines, circles, and swirls. There are more than 300 of them in the area. Tests have been carried out to determine the age of the Blythe and Taglios, but the results of those tests are largely inconclusive. The giant figures could be anywhere between 500 and 2,000 years old. Because we don't know how old they are, it's tough to say who created them. The most likely candidates are either the Quechan or Mojave Indians. Many of the figures are thought to represent Mastamo, the creator of life, which would indicate that the Mojave are the more likely of the two. Such is the size of the figures that it's hard to see them properly from ground level. They weren't noticed until 1932, when they were spotted by chance from a plane passing overhead. People often wonder how Native Americans could have made the glyphs without being able to see what they were doing properly. We're yet to come up with a good answer to that question. While we may not understand all of the reasons why our ancient ancestors created the Blythe and Taglios or any of the other glyphs we've looked at so far, we can at least see that they were making symbolic representations of their gods, or of the people and animals that lived among them. We have no idea whatsoever why the ancient residents of Sahama Bolivia created the Sahama Lines. There are thousands of almost perfectly straight lines crossing the desert, stretching on for miles in every direction, but they serve no apparent purpose. The lines don't start anywhere significant, nor do they end anywhere significant. Archaeologists think they were etched into the sand of the desert about 3,000 years ago. Making them would have been incredibly difficult. Each of them is around 10 feet wide and remains straight even when crossing rugged highland terrain close to the Nevado Sahamo volcano. We can't rule out the idea of them being somehow connected to whatever these ancient people believed about the volcano but that's just a guess. Another idea is that these might have been footpaths leading to important religious sites, but there are no signs of those sites. We have no clues to work from. Enormous geoglyphs have become a recurring theme in this video, so let's look at another one. This is the Long Man of Wilmington, etched into his hillside in Wilmington, England. It's a popular site among neo-pagans who come here every year to partake in rituals. However, there's no evidence that pagans had anything to do with its creation. The figure is 235 feet long and clutches what are thought to be staffs in each hand. Unlike the Uffington White Horse, the Wilmington Longman isn't truly ancient. Analysis of the site indicates either a 16th or 17th century origin. That's recent enough for us to expect there to be a written record of its creation, or at least a contemporary explanation of its existence, but there's nothing. Before the tests were carried out, most historians assumed the figure to have Bronze Age or Iron Age origins. Having 16th or 17th century origins means that the geoglyph can't possibly have any connection to ancient pagans, but modern pagans sidestepped that problem by refusing to accept the test results. The Longman Morris men come here every year on May Day to perform a traditional dance at the base of the figure. Not all petroglyphs are carved into the ground or dug into a hillside. Some are painted on rocks. There are more than 10,000 examples of that to be found at the Sears Point petroglyphs in Dateland, Arizona, USA. This is easily the most significant collection of petroglyphs in the American Southwest. 
It's likely that the majority of the art was created by the Patayan culture, although today there are 15 tribes in the area who each claim the work as their own. Sears Point has been home to many cultures over many centuries, so proving who came first and who made the first glyphs is likely to be impossible. What we do know is that people have added to the collection as recently as the 20th century, with the names of gold rush groups and individuals who passed this way between 1840 and 1900 etched into the rock. Dating glyphs and stones is almost impossible, and so therefore is dating the petroglyphs. However, they only appear on volcanic basalt rock outcrops, which suggests the artists knew that there was something unusual about the stone they used as a canvas. Who or what is the Badlands Guardian in Walsh, Alberta, Canada? This mysterious face has been carved into the landscape with incredible skill and elaborate detail, but the full face can only be seen and appreciated from the air. When we say that it was carved with incredible skill and contains elaborate details, we don't mean that it was carved by human hands. Apparently, this very clear image of a human face was created by nothing other than the erosion effect of rainwater on layers of soil. Many people find that extremely difficult to believe. Not only is there a full human face here, but there's also a full human head. The head is wearing a First Nations style headdress. Nature has undoubtedly created some incredible things on the surface of the earth, but did it really create this? It took modern technology to reveal the image to the world. Nobody knew it was there at all until an eagle-eyed viewer spotted it on Google Earth. Since then, the official explanation of the face being created by natural causes has been hotly debated on the internet. Normally, we take the word of scientists on matters like these, but this one leaves us with questions. Is the Maori man in Australia an ancient geoglyph or a modern practical joke? Could it be both? This is a mystery that some people believe has already been solved, but questions still remain. The enormous glyph can be seen from the skies above Kalana, surrounded by nothing. Much of central South Australia is empty and undeveloped, and Kalana is especially empty. Apparently, somebody drove into the wilderness in 1998 to create an anatomically perfect drawing of an aboriginal hunter. Their drawing is more than two and a half miles long. Nobody has ever come forward to claim the work as their own, and nobody has ever professed to be a witness to its creation. It's far too big for anyone to have done this working alone, but if it was created by a team of people, they're all keeping their silence. This is the largest work of art in the world, so big it can be seen clearly from space. A plaque was found close to the figure's head in 1999, and on the plaque is an American flag, the Olympic ring logo, and a quote about aboriginal hunting. That only serves to deepen the mystery. Returning to the topic of Native Americans, we have them to thank for the creation of the Bighorn Medicine Wheel in Lovell, Wyoming, USA. The design isn't especially complicated, but it was still probably a very difficult thing to make. The ancient stone symbol is at the top of Medicine Mountain, some 10,000 feet above the rest of the Bighorn Range and covered in snow for the majority of the year. It's only when the sun comes out that the wheel becomes visible, but that's fine because summer was when it became useful to the people who made it. After finishing their work somewhere between three and 800 years ago, the Plains tribes used their wheel to track the positions of the sun, moon, and other celestial objects in the sky. By sitting in specific cairns on the outer perimeter of the wheel, you can line yourself up with the exact place where the sun rises and sets on the summer solstice, and also the heliacal risings of Sirius, Rigel, Alderberon, and other bright stars. The 28 spokes on the wheel align with the 28 days in the lunar cycle. The wheel is still used by indigenous groups in modern times to predict the summer solstice. 
You could call the Bighorn Medicine Wheel a star calendar of sorts. However, it's not quite as sophisticated as the star calendar in Golan Heights, Syria, known as Ruj El Hiri. In fact, this stone monument is so mysterious that we're not totally sure it's actually a star calendar at all. That's just the best guess of the many archaeologists and historians who have studied the complex arrangement of piled stone rings. Nobody has ever been able to date Rujam El Hiri, and nor has anyone fully decoded its meaning. What has been proven is that there was once a tomb beneath its central cairn, but that was robbed hundreds of years ago and left empty. Some experts feel that the monument is more than 5,000 years old, but the evidence they cite to support that date is shaky. It's been proven that the rings can be used to measure equinoxes, but that doesn't necessarily mean that this was their use. Even if it was, it doesn't mean that measuring equinoxes was the only thing the monument was used for. More than one observer has pointed out that the rings are arranged like a labyrinth, so perhaps the objective was to stop people from getting in or out of the tomb at its center. Subscribe to the channel, turn on the notification bell, and enjoy watching new videos on my channel. Thanks for watching and see you soon!